Welcome to the KNX basic course practice. The worksheet collections are designed in such a way that already in part one, which you have opened here, almost all important aspects of ETS project planning and commissioning are covered. Starting from worksheet two, fewer new topics are added. Worksheets one to three and worksheet five part one are relevant for the final exam. All other worksheets are optional, are already part of the advanced course and are intended in the basic course training to provide further challenges for participants who make faster progress. From a methodological point of view, the course starts in worksheet one with getting familiar with plant design in ETS, a simple project with the common basic functions switching Dimming and solar protection control is created. The next step is to explore the workstation that is the Siemens Gamma Training Kit with the help of the diagnostic functions and prepare for the actual programming of the training project. Step 3 consists of setting the individual addresses of the project devices. Finally, these devices are fully configured and completely addressed, and their application program is downloaded. This is followed by the test and the final system diagnostics. Introduction to the practice. In our practical exercises, we will plan, design and commissioning one floor of an office building. In the picture, you can see the conference room of this floor. In this room, there are three lighting groups and three solar protection devices. Here we have Venetian blinds. Later, we will also add, if there is enough time, the temperature control, which is optional for the basic course. In the Gamma Training Kit version 5.1, we have an eight-way switching dimming actuator, Siemens short form N536 DB551, whose channels A, B and C control the lighting circuits in the conference room. This actuator has a front side control panel for manual overrides, so it can be tested immediately after installation, wiring and switching on line voltage if all circuits are correctly wired and work as expected, even if it has not yet been programmed by ETS. The two actuators for the solar protection have the short form RL521-23, each has two channels to which a blind simulation electronics is connected here, but there is no possibility of manual override to test it. Now we talk about the sensors. The triple push button T1 is located together with the triple push button T5 and a presence detector on the lower left operating module M131. As long as it has not been parameterized and downloaded, it cannot be tested. This push button is intended for operating the lighting in the conference room. For users of a basic Gamma Training Kit 5.1 with only one module plate 110, it is the triple push button on this plate. By the way, the abbreviation BTM stands for Bus Transceiver Module. It is the type of bus coupling unit required for the function of these Siemens push buttons. BTMs are to be mounted in the wall box behind the push button. On this picture, you see the intended primary configuration of the lighting control push button T1 for the conference room. The device is set up as a triple rocker switch. That means the left buttons will all switch on or if configured dim brighter and the right buttons will do the opposite, that is switch off or dim darker. The fourth device, we call it T2, we will use is a so-called room control unit. Such a device combines the operation of all room functions including temperature control and also offers the possibility to display measured values from the building environment, for example, the outside air temperature or the wind speed. 
For the time being, we will use this device only for solar protection control. Later we will continue to further exploit its features. Here a real picture after downloading the configuration of the room control unit. Special use for the conference room, 3 times blinds control is planned. We start the design work now by starting the engineering tool software ETS. Find the icon shown here on your laptop screen and click on it briefly one or two times depending on the settings. After ETS has started, the so-called dashboard should be visible. Here navigate to the overview. Click on the plus symbol to create a new project. Enter a suitable name, here for example office building. Set the backbone to twisted pair. This is important for the line coupler later and finally create the project. ETS provides several windows. For the time being, we only want to use the windows buildings and group addresses. To do so, go to workplace, open new panel and choose the required panels. The horizontal arrangement makes sense because you can see more information of the displayed elements. Please apologize in this context that some of the screenshots have German expressions. They have been taken from an originally German practicing project, so please use the hints made in the callouts. ETS can also be operated in many different ways. On the one hand, we are the classic menu structure, but also by means of quick selection keys above the menu. These quick selection keys can be configured as shown here. To open this configuration panel, you have to press the right mouse button in the area of the quick selection keys. Let's now proceed on our office building project. By creating the project, the first building in the building view is already created with the same name. To create building parts, like a room in our case, click in the context menu, small triangle pop-up menu, there you select rooms. In a dialog that appears, Create the conference room. DIN rail mounted devices belong to the distribution board. The distribution board must be located in a room. Therefore, you now mark the conference room and insert a cabinet in the same way. Simply call it cabinet. Next step. The required products have to be inserted into the room or the distribution board. Select the conference room with the right mouse button and in the context menu add devices. The first device you need to find is the BTM wall switch or push button UP22X. On the next slide you can see the best way to proceed with the product search. If the Siemens BTM push button was found with this search text as the only hit, you only have to click on add. Otherwise, select it before clicking the Add button. By the way, if you wonder about abbreviations, UP stands for Flush Mount. It simply is the abbreviation of the German words for it, Unterputz. When you are finished, the result should contain exactly these devices. The order respectively the addressing can vary because it depends on the order of insertion. But this is not important for the further work. Best is to search for the six digit application program number if you know it. But this piece of information may not be shown with devices from other manufacturers than Siemens, as it is optional. Otherwise, search for the text in the column product. To reduce the number of hits, you can also enter the name of the manufacturer in the filter. All parts of the text are linked by AND for searching like in Google. We now begin to parameterize the inserted devices according to their intended use. As first device, we take the triple BTM push button T1 called wall switch in the product database. 
The application program for the Siemens BTM switches contains all variants of the hardware. Therefore, the button selection must be done first. Set this for the triple UP223-14 push button as follows. See red frames. Now the rockers are parametrized from top to bottom. The top rocker switches conference ceiling light. The default setting is already correct. For the rockers B, beamer light and C, flower light, the rocker evaluation must be set as a button pair. This will also change the function selection, so that it now also includes dimming, which is desired in this way. So nothing else has to be changed. Let's proceed to the UP227 room control unit T2. As you can see from the list of objects, here functions must be parameterized. Parameterize the first three functions identically as sun protection. Don't forget to enter a sensible text less than 12 characters. The solar protection actuator is next in line. Here we meet a so-called plug-in for the first time. This is an application program with additional software that must be installed the first time this application is imported. The installation is relatively simple, but as usual today, license terms must be accepted and administrator rights must be available for the setup to run successfully. In our case, this is already done. So we open the product specific parameter dialog and the two channels of the actuator must now be set one by one identically. The first page, functions objects, does not need to be changed because the default setting of blind is already correct. All other parameters are currently not relevant for us. Let's come to the second page. With Venetian blinds, it is essential to know their running time parameters. This concerns on the one hand the travel time between the two end positions and on the other hand the sled adjustment time. This solar protection actuator has a detection for mechanical end position contacts of corresponding blind drives. In the Gamma Training Kit 5.1 this end position circuit is electronically simulated. Therefore, the actuator is parameterized here with end position detection, yes. And we do not need to worry about the travel times any further. By the way, it would be 20 seconds with manual setting in the Gamma Training Kit. The sled adjustment times are, again due to simulation, both identical because the LED simulation only makes 90 degrees sled movement. In the Gamma Training Kit, comparatively long adjustment times of 1800 milliseconds are set here in order to achieve a better precision with regard to the six steps via the seven position LED. Now, remember that channel B must be set like channel A and that there is a second actuator of the same type for blind M3. Cleverly, one copies the first actuator, so one does not have to parameterize the second one again identically with the first one. The last device for the conference room is now the switching dimming actuator, installed in the distribution board at the top right, as mentioned earlier. Here, everything is currently usable in the default setting, both the device settings page and the channel specific settings. On this page, you see the appropriate channel specific settings of the switching dimming actuator. They must be set identical to all channels in use in our case. As mentioned before, this is the default state, so it is only for cross-check if everything is okay. We have not yet finished setting up the bus devices. The group addressing and thus the function assignment is still missing. However, 
we do not want to do that at this stage. We want to prepare our bus line now so that the projected devices can be loaded without any problems. The first step to do this is to set up the programming connection to the bus. Follow the steps shown above. Finally, point 7, please edit the physical address of the interface so that it starts exactly like your project line, for example 1.1, .1, and enter the number 255. To make sure that this address will not make any conflicts, please check if the entered address is free, point 8. Checking individual addresses. Dashboard line scan. The line scan can be used to determine which bus subscribers are present on a particular line. To perform it, follow the steps shown here. In addition, a project comparison can be carried out. We want to check now, before we load the individual addresses of our project, with it whether this line is free and if not, free it. Unloading can be done from the Dashboard Diagnostic Dialog or from the Project Diagnostic Dialog. However, in the Dashboard you have more freedom, especially you can apply it to any lines. If now subscribers are found on the projected line, here the 1.1, the procedure is now the following. Please go to the next page. If you didn't find devices on this line, try with a line address given to you by the instructor and repeat this task in order to be able to perform the next steps for unloading. The complete unloading of the found devices is now done in three steps per device. Start is the line scan. The first device is double-clicked. This causes the ETS to switch to the dialog Individual Address Check. There you now press the button Device LED On. A green symbol appears next to the address indicating that the device is present and a red LED indicating that this device is now in addressing mode. Now switch to the Unload Device dialog See next page. Unload devices in the dashboard. Press the unload button. ETS now deletes the application program and overrides the individual address with 15.15.255. At the end, if everything went well, you will get this success message. Repeat the whole process until all devices are unloaded. Finally, carry out another line scan to check this. Have all addresses disappeared? Download individual address. After you have made sure that there are no more devices in the training kit that could conflict with the configured individual addresses in your project, you can now load the individual addresses from your project into the devices. To do this, use the classic method where possible that is, select the device, menu item, download individual address and press the programming button. For online training, this method can't be used. So further methods are described on the following pages. Download individual address with Siemens app address by ID. In ETS, the Siemens app address by ID is opened with the menu item apps main menu line at the top right. An additional window is opened below the building view. Now select the devices to be addressed in the building view and enter them in the app with the individual address. There are two ways to enter the ID. One, use a barcode scanner to read the barcode and transfer it directly into the serial number field. See next page. Two, Enter the 12-digit number code of the device in the serial number field. Afterwards, one click on the button download, the individual address is now transferred to the device. The advantage is 
that it is no longer necessary to press the programming buttons on the devices to transfer their individual address. This saves a lot of time and can also be used for remote programming. Barcode scanner apps are available for mobile phones. They are connected to the PC via Bluetooth. Serial codes of KNX devices. Most of the KNX devices nowadays have a unique serial number. For your practice training, you will be provided with such a list of serial numbers like shown here. Of course, it will be the matching list from your training kit. On this list, you will find all serial numbers of the devices installed in the Gamma Training Kit, both in plain text for copying and in barcode type 128, in order to be able to transfer them to the serial number app using a barcode scanner. If you have physical access to the training kit, not applicable for online training and remote access, how can the programming LED of the UP227 be switched on? First, navigate to the screen settings tool icon on the front panel of the device. Press then the buttons in the second line seen from the top simultaneously for at least five seconds. The device switches the display. Push the top right button short. Now the programming LED is illuminated and the address can be downloaded as explained before. Now that we have assigned the individual addresses of our devices, we want to run some tests if all went well. So we open the diagnostics monitor again and we go to individual addresses. First option, programming mode. Press the button start. After that, press the programming button of one of your devices in operation again and watch if its individual address appears in devices in programming mode. This step is of course not applicable for online remote training. Second option, checking the individual addresses, existence and localization. Switch to the appropriate dialog individual address check. Type in the field a known address. Let the programming LED flash or check its existence. Testing the individual address line scan. Here we do the line scan as we have learned at the beginning a second time. This time we simply want to make sure that all of our KNX devices have been properly addressed. We proceed now to the functional part of our project design and start with the group address structure. 1. Switch to the group addresses window. Mark group addresses. 2. Press add main groups and create a new main group training kit. Make sure that you select the number one for the main group. Three, now select the main group training kit. Four, push the button at middle groups. Five, create the three middle groups, central, lighting and solar protection now. Planning the group addresses, lighting conference. Remember what we have to do next. We have to insert the subgroups for our intended functions. The five functions listed here are required for the room operation conference lighting. And these six functions are required for the room operation solar protection. The previously shown group addresses are now created in the group address window under the already existing middle groups. Mark the middle groups respectively. Add five group addresses in lighting and another six in solar protection and name it as seen on the previous pages. 
Here you see the resulting address configuration as it should result also in your project. Now as we have the group addresses created, the final step must be done, linking the communication objects. Link the communication objects and group addresses via drag and drop. 1. Mark the desired group address, for example light A on off. 2. Click on the device, for example the push button triple. The communication objects appear in the right window. 3. Click and hold a communication object, for example switch rocker A off. 4. Drag this communication object in the group address window right below. 5. Release the mouse button, drop. Now the communication object is linked with a group address. Drag and drop all other functions until all necessary objects are linked. Once more, on this picture it is shown how it works. Objects and group addresses must be connected. In the beginning you should use only one scheme, for example drag addresses to the objects. But it can be done the other way around too. Objects can also be pulled to the addresses as well. The column count shows if all objects are already connected to a group address as planned. At least two assignments are mandatory. Continue the address assignment with all other devices of your project. Linking the communication objects for the actuators. Don't forget the actuators. They also have to be linked with the group addresses via drag and drop. But of course not all communication objects are needed. Link the two actuators now as described below. Here we have the two solar protection actuators and their address links. Remember, you can save time when you configure the parameters of only one device and then use it as master for the other devices by copy and paste. Now the final programming step follows. Since the individual address has already been loaded, you only need to download the application program to all devices as shown. Diagnostics Device Info Now as you have finished all working steps, does everything work as intended? If not, there are more diagnostic functions. With the device info, for example, you can find out if a bus subscriber works right and if the right address is linked with the communication objects, which are intended for this purpose. 1. Please mark the triple push button. 2. Go to Info, Device Info. 3. Select with group communication. 4. See the result. Are all addresses linked correctly? See the result on the next page. To see the results of the device info, you have to click on this rather small icon in the history of pending operations. Diagnostic of functions. Now it's the turn of diagnostics of functions. This can only be executed sensibly by the use of the recording of the bus telegrams. Therefore, we have three options. 1. Group monitoring. Bidirectional telegram recorder. Can also be used for sending telegrams, important for the test of the functions from the ETS. Bus monitoring. Unidirectional telegram recorder. Reactionless, sends no acknowledge to the bus. Needed for true analyzing of the bus communication. 3. Group address window. Visualization in table form. Displays in each case the last received or sent value to a group address. Open now Diagnostics Group Monitoring. Press the rocker A of the tree gang push button left and right and watch the group monitor window. More information in Worksheet 3. Saving the serial numbers. 
Actually, we are finished with our work. But before we proceed to worksheet 2, we will do one last thing, which can be very time-saving for our further workflow. Before the next step, the unloading, we want to save all serial numbers as comments. This is because unloading also deletes the serial numbers that have already been determined by ETS. This cannot be prevented completely, but you can copy the serial numbers from the input lines of the Siemens address via serial number app and paste them into the comment fields of the devices. So you have them available again later if you want to download the devices again. Commissioning unload. We want to practice the function unload now a second time. To cast devices completely or temporary inoperative, there is the function unload. Unload is split again into one, unload application, makes the device inoperative but keeps the physical or individual address. Two, unload application and address deletes the individual address too. At this option, you also have to push the programming button, like during programming. If you want to unload remotely, you can't press the program button, but you have used the trick to avoid this already before. Remember how we did our first unload? Appendix to compare. Devices object links. Here all sensors. You see the objects are filtered, so only the linked ones are visible. On this page you see all actuators. Again the objects are filtered, so all linked ones are visible alone. In this image you see all group addresses of task 1 at a glance. Very important, there should always be a minimum of two in column number of associations. Why? We have reached the end of worksheet 1. All required steps of creating an ETS project till the final commissioning and diagnostics have been practiced. How do you feel now? Don't hesitate to ask your instructor if you still have doubts or questions regarding what we have done here. See you later in worksheets 2.